There are many farm operations in the Fraser Valley and Metro Vancouver. Let's meet two and see how their farm lives compare. Meet farmer Lauren Taves. We farm over 50 acres. He runs Apple Barn Farm in Abbotsford. We grow greenhouse vegetables, berries, and apples, three poultry barns, and pumpkins. And those are the main things that we grow. We have four tractors, two lawn tractors, two ATVs, five pickup trucks uh, for the markets as well, and also a uh, bobcat with like this thing here. Why they left this up like this? Can I go underneath it? I don't know. Now, let's visit Chris Thoreau's farm. He runs My Urban Farm in the Strathcona neighborhood of Vancouver. Size-wise, our space here is about 1,800 square feet, and our, our actual growing space is a little less than 300 square feet. We do soil-grown sprouts. We do three different types, sunflower, pea, and buckwheat. Well, officially, I don't have any farm machinery, uh, even though this is technically a machine. This is our uh, spinner, so we spin the sprouts in here. And the other machine we would use would be a bicycle, because we do all our deliveries by bike and by trailer. Technically, his farm doesn't exist. Essentially, what I do is illegal. Um, not because it's a bad thing, but because there's no zoning or business license uh, policies yet in the city for urban farming. We followed each farmer for a day in summer 2011. Lauren started his day with his least favorite task, office work. What I'm doing right now is uh, we're looking to transfer some workers to other farms that may need them for their fall harvest. A provincial program allows farms to hire Mexican workers at reduced rates. He's got several workers living at his farm. We pay ten to fourteen thousand dollars a year. We pay plane tickets to get here. Uh, it's good for, or more than that. Um, if I can transfer someone to another farm, they will pay that plane ticket back. At my urban farm, staffing hasn't been an issue so far. I have people all the time wanting to volunteer. So there's a bit of a trend now with urban farming and it allows people to get an experience with farming um, without having to leave the city. I pay 12 bucks an hour, which for agriculture work is not bad. For casual work and relatively easy work, I think that attracts people. And uh, my uh, glowing sense of humor, really. Um, I think that's what keeps people coming, coming, <laughs> coming back. At the Apple Barn, Lauren has traded computer mouse for tape measure so that he can deal with a plumbing issue in the petting zoo. I'm going to put an automatic flush system in. I'm just kind of writing down parts and things like that. That was part of my list today. So uh, because you can see here, this was washed this morning. And look at that already. That's how much the bunnies wow. poop. <laughs> Next stop is the emerging corn maze. It's kind of new for us, but it's coming off very nice. The corn is growing very well. This last week that we put the ribbons up because we felt that we should have actually squeezed in the rows a little tighter. I'm just uh, yep. sending some emails out. Lauren is feeling the double pressure of business and the ripening crops. That's a huge amount of aphids. Question is, is it too late to put on a spray or you just let the mother nature play it out and you lose a portion again? Lauren decides not to spray and that some weeding should be done instead. So here's a note, that's something I'll get the crew to do. This is what I do my rounds. Yeah. Chris took a spin at farming by starting the business while in university. It's a very concentrated crop, so there, it's very high value and I only need a little, little bit of space. This is year three, uh, the business model is holding up fairly well. Most of the morning is spent processing dozens of flats of sprouts. It's a very monotonous job, we do a lot of repetition. The growing benches must be sanitized, then still to be done is more seeding, paperwork, and the deliveries. It's a lot to balance sometimes, especially because of the cycling aspect of it. I love that, but uh, it's fatiguing. 
I've got a two and a half year old son at home, there's so much to do. And while it would be great to have people doing specific things, uh, just financially that's not viable. Overhead costs play a big role in both farms. I, my farm has not been growing more busy because I want it to, it is because I have to. I probably spend around $2.8 million a year is for the checks that we write or to service loans. Food system audits, carbon tax, and safety regulation upgrades increase the operating budget. A small operation could never, ever afford to do that. At Chris's urban farm, there are no industry or government fees or requirements yet. Wendy at the city, she did warn us. She said, you know, be careful what you ask for because you could get some policies that are essentially pro-urban farming, but introduce a bunch of costs. One cost he doesn't have is rent. I had offered to pay rent because I actually feel a bit more comfortable knowing I'm paying for a service, but it makes it much more financially viable for me. On last year's numbers, we did $21,000 in sales and had about uh, $11,000 in expenses, so about a 50% uh, margin there. Okay, I got some sprouts for you folks here. Chris delivers sprouts to a few Vancouver restaurants, but the bulk sell at farmer's markets. Because I'm dealing directly with the end user of the, of the produce, I'm getting a lot of feedback. It's a very social time as well. The Apple Barn has many sales techniques, including an on-site sales extravaganza each fall. We've adopted a, a sort of a tourism element. He also sells through distributors, his own wholesale operation, and farmers markets. We got into multiple crops, retailing what we're growing to try and battle the lower market returns. Of course, that causes more people hired and more staffing. And next thing you know, instead of me going the tractor and working, I'm running crews. That's actually probably why I don't sleep much right now, because I, I am at a bit of a juggernaut. Chris's farm future is not tied to the land. We're working with the city right now to look at policies relating to uh, urban farming and how those need to change. So how those policies change will dictate where this business goes. For Lauren, the farm is the land. Business angles may change, but as a man who grew up on this farm, and now as a dad of seven children here, it is likely that Apple Barn will be feeding the region for decades to come.